Hi guys! Have you ever wondered what games user research means? Hi, uh, I'm Graham McAllister. Uh, I'm the director of Player Research, which is a games user research studio in Brighton, UK. Hi, I'm Andrea Abney. I'm a senior user experience researcher at uh, Scopely, a mobile game company. What types of studies can I do to join a games user research team? What each of these studies can bring to your field? So, um, yeah, there's actually a lot of different things that you can study in order to get into games user research. So my background, um, I got my undergraduate degree in psychology and my master's degree is in human-computer interaction, which are both pretty typical things that um, people in the field study. Some other things that you can study are sociology, anthropology, game design, computer science. Um, and it's really all about having the, the passion for games user research and um, finding, finding your path there. Um, but you can come from a lot of different backgrounds, just basically anything that's about technology and people and games are all great things to study. Getting into games user research, um, the people we speak to come from multiple paths, but I think the two most common ones uh, are probably one from the human side, so something such as psychology or neuroscience, and the other would be something like computer science, interaction design or system side. Is there any place for theoretical research while working for or in a game company? I think there definitely is a place for theoretical research um, working in a games company. Um, it's not going to be the focus of your job most likely unless you're in a uh, sort of more of an maybe R&D kind of position. Um, but I know definitely uh, my, my background, I was at Disney. We did a little bit of theoretical research there, but there's typically so much to do with your day-to-day -day of you know, running playtests and, and doing things that you know, kind of directly contribute to the game's products that you're probably going to be doing more of that and much less theoretical research. So if theoretical research is, is really your focus, then you pr might want to consider staying in academia. I think from the human side, things like uh, psychology and neuroscience, the students who choose those disciplines are very good at running studies involving human participants. So they're used to getting participants in, making them feel at ease. They're used to analyzing data and the methods involved uh, and dealing with human subjects. But on the computer science side or the system side, uh, the students who do HCI or computer science or interaction design, they're very good at understanding systems and the subtle detail of what makes one one interaction better than another. Uh, but ideally, a mix of both would, would be perfect. So in a games user research studio such as ours, because we're an agency, we tend to be business driven. In other words, our survival depends on business coming in. However, uh, theoretical research definitely does have a place. So as technologies change, such as at the moment, virtual reality or augmented reality, we still look back to the theoretical foundations of the field to help us deliver better services. So although we may not be doing theoretical research as much as we would like, we still use uh, existing research to make our own services better. What are the most interesting things that you experience as a games user researcher? In terms of the most interesting things that, that we see, I think what interests me most is those moments where the research proves um, perhaps a design team, uh, I don't want to say proves them wrong, but maybe contradicts their own findings. So they're certain something is going to happen or the player will behave a certain way and it doesn't happen. And of course when you see the player do something else and you interview them to find out why, that is endlessly fascinating. Understanding why someone did something against your expectations. Um, I think it surprises developers, it helps them learn, and as a researcher it's always exciting. Oh my gosh, so many, so many things. Um, so one of the things that I really love about working in the mobile space is that mobile games are really made for so many different types of people. So um, I just get to work with this really wide variety of, of different people and um, that's really great working, uh, you know, from kids, you know, I've, I run playtests with kids three and four years old, which is a much different experience than running playtests with, you know, women in their 60s who like to play hidden object games. And it's, it's just really cool to, to meet all these different people and see their experiences and um, see, you know, that, that games are really for everyone. Um, so that, that's a really great thing about, about the field and about being in a part of the games industry that's more uh, connected to 
the, the players. Uh, in contrary, what were the hardest challenges you had to overcome? Uh, so with my background being more in you know, traditional um, user experience and, and psychology, I'm kind of coming from, from that background and uh, did some consulting work outside of games and more of the like healthcare field and on, um, on, a, on a bunch of different sort of business to business kinds of products. So when I made the transition into games, uh, it was, it's, it's great because, you know, games are fun and I love games, um, but there's also kind of the problem is that games are supposed to be fun. Like if, if you're doing user research on a you know suite of, of marketing products or something like that, you you don't care about whether the person finds them fun. You're just really focused on the usability and their kind of satisfaction with the product. Um, with games, there's this other challenging element where you have to figure out ways to determine if people think these products are fun and if they're, you know, ha getting that, getting that engagement with it that you're not really looking at when you're in, um, you know, other parts of the user research field. So I think that's that's one of the biggest challenges is getting to that information, but it's also um, one of the things that I totally love about the field because it just adds this other element to it um, that makes it really interesting work. I think there are many challenges in user research and they don't seem to be getting a lot easier uh, as time goes on. Some challenges have always been there, for example, uh, when should you contact a developer to start the research? If you're in-house, that's fine. Maybe it's the start of a project. But we're not in-house. We're always on the outside. So one of our challenges is, how do you contact a developer at the right time? Um, other challenges, I think, or difficulties is making sure as many changes as possible um, take place. So you're sending back a rich, detailed user research report. And what you're hoping for is that these findings will make the game better. Um, so those things are they're linked in some way. You want to contact the developer as soon as possible to make sure the changes get, get made. Um, and I think those are difficult challenges. After 10 years as a games user researcher, where would I end up? I think there are a lot of different paths that you can take if, if research is your passion and that's what you want to be doing. Uh, you could stay in that kind of you know, primary contributor researcher role in, in your team and um, just be doing more advanced kinds of research. Um, if you are more interested in kind of people management and, and running a team, then you could definitely go that route. Um, I think those are, are probably the two uh, most likely things or some maybe combination of those two. Um, but it's definitely a growing field. I think 10 years from now, uh, it's going to be a really huge field, probably, so there'll be definitely lots of opportunities for, for growth and to continue on in your career. After 10 years in, in user research, um, I think you've got a few options, really. Uh, maybe more than a few. Um, an obvious one, maybe, you may be a director of a, a department. You'll be lead user researcher or principal or leading a group of your own. Um, you could have enough experience, in fact, you almost certainly would, to go freelance. Uh, and do your own thing. So if, you want, if you're feeling constrained by the user research methods or the games you're working on within an existing studio, hey, go and do your own thing. Um, of course, I would say the final one, which is start your own studio. 